Hello everyone, this is Teresa Benson, Product Marketing Manager here at Red Lion Controls, continuing our series on Crimson 3.1. So look at our previous episodes to see how you too can create a primitive that fills from the bottom based on a data tag, how you can create an on-off that occurs when a value reaches a set point. Today what we're going to do is work with scaled values. First, just a quick a tutorial on how decimal points and numeric values work with integers. So I'm going to go ahead and create three data tags. I'm just going to go click, click, click. I've got my three data tags. Um, the first one, I'm going to assign a fixed value of 1. That second one, I am going to say is 10. And the third one, I am going to say is 100. And if you've noticed in previous episodes, as soon as I assign it something other than an internal value, uh, it turns color. That way I know it's actually tied to something. I've done something to affect the source of this data tag. All right, let's drag these onto the screen. I'm going to see my 110 and 100. No problem at all. Okay. Let's go to the Format tab on Data Tags. We haven't spent a lot of time here yet, but I want you to see something that uh, happens when we start adding decimal points to integer values. Let's go to the middle and pick what type of numeric value this is, numeric data tag this is. It's a numeric value. And right now we can see that there are five digits before the decimal point and one after. I want to change that. I would like one uh, decimal point or one value after the decimal point. Go ahead and hit enter. All right, so far that's only affected tag one and you can see I now have a digit after the decimal point. However, the value has changed and we'll talk about that in a moment. Let's get these two on the same page. The quickest way to do it, of course I can always go to tag two, pick numeric and increment the uh, values after the decimal point, but I can also just select both of them, right click, copy from, I love copy from, there's a lot you can do with this, and we're going to copy the format from tag one. See that square on my uh, mouse? That tells me it's waiting for an input from me. I'm going to click on tag one, it says the properties were applied, and now if I look at the formats for these, we can see that there's one digit after the decimal point. Now when I click back over on display pages, uh, we'll see that as well. All right, so what happened though? I had 110, 100, and now I've got 0.1110. We have got to start thinking about uh, what we've told Crimson to display. And so since we've asked it to display a value after the decimal point, we need to start giving it values that we expect to see on the screen, taking into account that extra position after the decimal point. So 1 becomes 10, 10 becomes 100, and 100 becomes 1,000. Now, in reality, this is still 100. It's 100.0 because of what we put here. Let's go back and look and notice how nothing's changed. This is just something to be aware of. When I click into the display pages on the navigation pane until I click on the page itself, we're not going to see that change. Go ahead and click and now we see those changes. So 1.0, 10.0, 100.0. So if I want, let's say, three uh, spaces after the decimal point, let's go ahead and copy that over. So I selected tag one and tag two this time. Copy from, I want to copy the format from tag three. And now let's go take a look. We can see there's now three after the decimal point. However, we have lost the values that we were expecting to see because we need to add those extra two zeros into the values we assign these data tags. So let's come up back over here. Two more zeros, so I have 1.000. There's that phantom decimal point in there. 10.000 and 100.000. Come back in, click and it's back to the way we would expect to see those numbers. Why do I bring this up? Well, let's say you have an analog input of some 
some kind. Um, our analog inputs, you know, have 15-bit resolution, which means you can have 32,768 values. However, on an analog input that's measuring some sort of real-world signal, that may not really be what we want to display on the screen. Maybe uh, 0 to 32,767 is actually voltage from 0 to 10 volts. If I just do 0 to 10 without accommodating for, you know, the the 32,768 steps that occur between 0 and 10, I'm not going to see anything interesting on the screen when those values start changing. So let's see what I mean, okay? I'm going to go ahead and delete these, and I'll delete them out of uh, data tags because I firmly believe it is valuable to do this over and over again. So let's create uh, a couple uh, data tags here. One is going to be uh, scaled, all right, it's going to be a scaled value, and one is going to be scaled with three decimal points. So scaled and scaled with three decimal points. Okay, we already have something in our database that is changing between zero and some number, and that number right now is 151. We can make it 32,767 uh, very easily. Uh, let's go look at our level data tag. Our level data tag uh, has on it a, a function called get up down data. Remember, you can look in our reference manual to understand how get up down data works. And whatever max level we give get up down data, it'll go between 0 and that max level minus 1. How do we assign max level 32,767? Well, there is a way in display pages to assign values at startup. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say 32,768. Why do I do that? Because get up down data is going to take n minus 1, 32,767. All right, so my max level is going to be 32,767 in that get up down data function. All right, so I've got my analog value that's going between 0 and 32,767. But we want to see that as a scaled value between 0 and 10. So let's look at our scaled value. Right now, on the data tab, there's this data scaling area, and we have do not scale. Let's go ahead and scale it to an integer. And it can, the input can be between 0 and 32,767. And to us, that means 0 to 10. All right, so 0 to 32,767, we want to scale to 0 to 10. All right, let's go ahead and copy that over to our scaled three decimal places uh, tag as well. So I'm going to do copy from, only this time, instead of copying format, we're going to copy scaling. And I'm going to copy the scaling from the scaled data tag. And now if we look, what I just typed in on the one is over here. But this time, let's add three decimal points. So I'm going to click pick, numeric. I'm going to add three decimal points. All right. We have to do one more thing. Right now, this 10, because I added those three decimal points, is actually 0 0.010. Right. So I need to give it those three extra spaces. So now, the data coming in, 0 to 32,767, is going to be scaled to 0 to 100, or to 10.000. All right? Let's see what that looks like on the screen. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. I'm going to put my scaled and scaled 3DP out here as well. I'd like them to be a little bit bigger, so I'm going to go ahead and click this larger font uh, button. I can also go into Properties and change the font size there. And I do it on the one, then I'm going to click on the other one, right click, copy from, copy text format, and now that's been scaled as well. Let's send this down to our HMI. All right, we can see that max level is at 32,768. And right now, we don't see much happening in terms of uh, scaled and scaled 3DP. That's because we never actually told scaled and scaled 3DP 
what the input was, right? We just set up the data tag, but we never told it what analog input we were looking at. So let's come back over and we're going to do that really quick. So scaled and scaled 3DP are actually looking at this level tag. So how do we do that? We have two ways we can do it. We can type in the word level or we can drag level over from our resource pane. Now, in, in a real application, you may actually have a different source down here under where it says master, and you might be pointing to a register value, you might be pointing to an input coming on one of the modules uh, in our E3IO, or in our graphite, or an input from our E3IO. For the purposes of this, we're actually pointing at that level data tag. All right, let's go ahead and send this down and we should see some things change. Coming back over. All right, already we can see something changing on our scaled three decimal place uh, value. So as this value is increasing, as level is increasing, we're seeing this increase as well. It's gonna take a long time before we see the non-decimal place uh, value start to change. And that's because we've essentially given this tag scaled um, only 10 uh, data points that it can choose from for values that can range from 30, 0 to 32,767. So that's where uh, adding some decimal points is valuable. You can also see that the primitive immediately adapted to that new max level and Right now, it's barely there because we're not even at one yet. So uh, that is how you scale an input, and that's how you make sure to point your data tag to whatever that input's going to be and how you add decimal places. Look for more tips and tricks on our YouTube channel, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.